Jim Rupsul and welcome to the selection series presented by Eslicker. Today we're lucky enough to be at the Samaya Distillery, Cambodia's only distillery right here in the heart of Phnom Penh. We have an amazing episode for you guys. Let's jump in and check it out. Welcome to the beautiful distillery of Samaya guys. Today I'm lucky enough to be joined by the owner and operator, Daniel. Daniel, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Can you please tell the viewers what is Samaya, how you came about it and what the place is generally about? Definitely, definitely. So first of all, welcome to Samaya. We're Cambodia's first rum distillery. We started this project about six years ago. And the idea was that you know, living in Cambodia and seeing the amazing quality raw materials all over the country and the potential, um, we really wanted to create Cambodia's first premium rum, right? And that's the, the adventure we, we started six years ago and here we are and happy to show you guys around today. Beautiful, really, really excited. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. Let's go. So welcome to the first stage of the tour, guys. Uh, this is the fermentation room. Daniel, can you explain to us what we're doing here? This looks a bit crazy. There's a whole bunch of silos here. What's exactly going on? Sure, sure. So, like you said, this is the fermentation room. This is the first step of the rum production process, right? So, we make our rums out of molasses. Okay? So, we buy the molasses uh, from local sugar mills. And we bring that in and we fill these tanks with molasses and water, right? And just dilute the molasses to create the right consistency okay, okay. and then we add the yeast right and the yeast is kind of like a bacteria that will eat the sugar inside the molasses right so that process takes about six to seven days what is what is the yeast doing to that 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 stage the molasses sure so what the yeast does is that it's actually a living organism that yep. eats the sugar okay. within the molasses and it turns that sugar into alcohol ah, and carbon dioxide okay, okay. Right? and that's why this process is so important because this is actually the only process, the only step in the process where the alcohol is actually created. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so every... this is really the, the first stage of the actual production side. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, every other step is really about then taking what we created here, extracting the parts that you like and improving the flavor, right? But this is really the critical step in the, in the process. And this is done with, with sugar cane? Is it like a... So with the molasses, is it is it a certain type of sugar that goes into? You mentioned the sugar mills there. Um, be, before we get into the process, maybe we'll talk a little bit about what rum is. Yeah, 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 that sounds good. Because rum is a rum is a big category, right? Yeah. There's many kinds of rum, but really the definition of rum is a spirit that is made from sugarcane or any of the byproducts of sugarcane, right? So there's two main types of, of rum. What's called agricole rum which is more the French Caribbean style rums. Okay. okay. These are made from the fresh sugar cane juice, right? So you squeeze the juice and you have to put it in the fermentation right, right away. Right. Yeah. The other type is what we do here, which is called industrial rum. And the difference is that we make it from molasses. Okay? Molasses is really the byproduct of taking the sugar cane, extracting sugar, the sugar crystals, and then the leftover, the byproduct is molasses. All right. right. Nice, nice. There's a lot more that goes on to making rum than I originally thought. It's really, really cool, really cool to hear. Um, should we jump to the next room? What, what, what's the sure. next stage in the, in the tour? We'll go to the distillation room right. and check it out. Let's do it, let's do it. So we're in what seems like a bit of a crazy room, guys. There's a lot of stuff going on behind me. This is the second stage of the tour. Daniel, what are we looking at here? Sure, sure. So this is our distillation room. Okay, this is a second step in the production process. So once we finish with the fermentation, the previous step, now we've created the alcohol, but it's all still mixed together with the rest of the molasses and, and minerals and water. And now we want to extract that alcohol that we've created, right? And that's really what distillation is about. And we do this using these stills. You can see these are very old style um, pot stills. These are great to really keeping a very nice and strong flavor, not extracting all the flavors out. Something's going on. What's going on up here? So that's actually... Um, we're kind of dripping water so that the, the vapors cool down and ah. it, it kind of works like a second distillation. Okay, right? okay, right? okay. So really how distillation works, I mean, the, there's a lot of science behind it, right? But the concept itself is very straightforward. Okay. Right? We have a mix of liquids that we pump into these two tanks. And then what we do, as you noticed, <laughs> we turn up the heat, we fire it up. And then as the temperatures go up, because every specific substance has a very precise evaporating temperature, then by controlling those temperatures very carefully, we can tell which substance is evaporating right at that moment, okay. right? So essentially we're using that, the, the evaporation of these liquids 
to separate the different components. Would it be fair to say that it's kind of like when you when you boil a jug at home and you're catching the steam, or so you boil something in your pot, you're catching kind of that steam that's condensing. Is that is that what it's kind of like doing? And that's the alcohol. Yeah, in a way, right? You're, in a way, in yeah. In a way, you're getting you're getting way. the water, okay, right? And okay. this in this case, we have many different liquids, so we're just catching one by one. That's, and you're just really you're just idea. getting that specific specific catch, and then that turns into. Uh, is this the finished product here? Is this alcohol here? Yeah, or? so as you can see, it's already dripping. So again, once it, we evaporate it, we run it through these condensers so that we can then collect it back down as a liquid, as you can see, right? We collect it in these small jars because, like I mentioned before, we're just trying to separate each component. Right, right. And then this is really where the, the art of, of the process starts to come yeah, in, right? Okay. Because you know, there's a lot of science, but there's a lot of different factors that play a role, right? So this is where our master distiller will come in and taste and smell every single kind of separation that we oh, do really? and so, make that final cut. So the distiller will come, dist the master distiller will come in, they'll try these and they'll think, yep, that's what we want, no, that's not what we don't exactly. want. Exactly. So, so we already have a good idea what it should be like, but gotcha. she makes okay. that final decision okay. on the cuts. And what happens, what happens to this if, it, if it's wrong? Does it go back into the still again or is it reused in some other way or is it just... Well, ho hopefully nothing goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but what we do is here is we don't collect all the liquid, right? We're, yeah. we're, this is what we're, I don't know if you've heard of the cuts, right? It's uh, we, we're separating all the different components. So we want to pick the ones that we like. And gotcha. she makes that final call of like what to start and when to stop. Amazing, right? amazing. What would happen if I drank this? Is it, is it very strong? Is it... What so this is coming out at about 83%. 83%? Right? If you're brave enough, you can, you can give it a try. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you, you already, even though it's very strong, you, you already get a very good sense of the flavor profile at okay. this stage. Right? And is there someone that, that manages that, that tastes it, or that checks to see what's going on with it? Sure, sure, yeah, process? I mean, we have a full team here working, and then we have our master distiller, ah, gotcha. who will be the one making the final decisions. They need to understand how this is eventually going to turn into the final product after years of aging or other processes that we go through. Right? Amazing, amazing. Okay, should we go to the next section? Yeah, definitely. Let's go. So just before we go to the next stage, guys, I was walking past, I said, Daniel, what are these things? They look like something out of some kind of sci-fi movie. What exactly is going on here with these ones? Are these stills as well, or? Yeah, definitely. So this is our the new addition to the Samai uh, family, right? So this is our, our new hybrid still. So it works as a pot still and a column still. Uh, the nice thing about these kinds of stills is that it lets us play around a lot more okay, with the final okay. product, right? So this is the kind of still that we're going to be using as we expand our, our production process. So does that mean that you'll be using what you create now with these stills as well, or will it be a, new, a completely new so, product? Or yeah. So we, we're doing a little bit of both, right? So we are still going to continue using our pot stills as the main production, especially for the gold rum. But this is going to let us play a lot more with white rums, flavor rums, infusions, uh, so very we're very cool. excited to try it out and, uh, and see what comes we're out. We're all excited too. Okay. So the next part of the stage, we're kind of back in the starting area where we first walked in. We've got a whole bunch of barrels in front of us. So Daniel, again, I ask you, what's going on? Sure. So this is actually the, the third and final stage of the process. This is our aging and, and blending stage. Um, and this is really where the magic happens. Right? This is where we get that freshly distilled liquid uh, you saw it, it was clear, it was very strong, very harsh. And we put it in these wooden barrels and leave it there for about two years. Right? And over that period of time, that interaction of the alcohol and the wood is going to create all the amazing flavors that come out okay. and we eventually bottle. So the barrels play a huge part in, in how the rum actually tastes. Definitely. So, definitely. so does that mean that there's, some of these are different barrels? Are they, are they new barrels or...? Old yeah, barrels? so we have a combination, as you can see, different kinds of barrels. We have American oak, we have French oak, we have some new barrels, we have used barrels. And at the end, you know, we, we find the right combination and we blend it together to get the final, final product. To get that signature to my taste. It's amazing. Because, I mean, this one looks, looks like it's very, very, very old and these ones look very, very new. But it's, it's interesting to know that the wood plays a huge part in the taste of the rum. And that, and you said two years. Yeah, two yeah. years. So is it is it always two years, or it depends what kind of rum you're making in the distillery? Yeah, so for us, the, our gold rum is aged for two years, but eventually we'll launch older and older editions. Wow. Uh, but everybody has their own way of doing it, right? Yeah. So it's about kind of your, what you're looking for, and uh, it's it's part of the fun, just playing around, experimenting, and see what you get. Very yeah. very cool. Okay, I think it's about time we try some rum. What do you reckon? Sounds perfect. <laughs> So we're at probably what's my favorite part so far, the tasting of the rum. Really, really, really excited about this, Daniel. 
Um, what have we got in front of us? Sure, so after all that hard work and waiting for the barrels to be ready and doing the blending, we finally end up with our final product, right? So we'll kind of walk you quickly through the four products that, that we have good. at the moment and, and we'll give it a try. Okay, okay. okay. So what are we gonna do first? So we'll start, we'll go from light to dark. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Absolutely. we'll start with our white rum, okay? This is a white rum that is actually aged for a year and then filtered back out. This not only changes the color, but also alters the, the final flavors. Um, the idea of this is that, you know, it's, it's something that you can play with a lot more in cocktails, nice. Um, nice. but also you should be able to enjoy it by itself. Okay, so beautiful, well. Let's give it a try. See what thanks you think. so much, cheers. cheers. What do you, what do you get? I get a bit of the um, dried fruits, a, a bit of coconut yeah. Yeah. as well. Um, it's not as sweet as I thought it was gonna be. It's a really, really nice balance, really clean. I can see this would make like a really banging mojito or yeah. a daiquiri, something really plain and simple, bit of lime, bit of zest in there. But I mean, just as a mixer as well, with your Coca-Cola or something would be great too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, perfect, and that's what we're going for, so. Mm. Glad you like it, one more. Really good, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cool, so moving on, then we have our gold rum. Okay. Okay. This was actually the first product that we launched. So this is the, the grand baby, is it? The, uh, the creme de la creme. This is it. This is really <laughs> like our, you know, what we work really hard to do. Uh, it's aged for two years. You can see the color. It's completely natural. That comes from sitting in the wood for a I was gonna say, so that because it's been sitting there for that two years, it's extracted that color out of the wood. Exactly, exactly. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, so cool. you get a very nice, rich color in here, and you also get a lot of new, more complex flavors from that aging process. Okay, right? okay. Um, the idea is that this is still a uh, nice premium, but kind of entry-level uh, rum. It's only two years, and eventually we'll have more aged editions later nice, on. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay, well, cheers again. Cheers. A lot of vanilla in this yeah. one. Yeah. A lot of vanilla, really, really nice. Really nice. Not as, I don't find it as sweet. I think maybe that's the, the age of the rum. It's kind of a lot cleaner. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have any sharp spikes. So this just is on its own, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, I yeah. like to drink it neat on the rocks. Yeah, uh, yeah. But also, you don't feel guilty. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. It so in, it's in your favorite cocktail. I think either, I think so. you put it brilliantly that it's at that entry level where it's not gonna, it's not gonna you know change the world. Although it's amazing, yeah. it's just perfect. Yeah. So it's gonna hit all those boxes. If you're just trying to get into rum, this would be a really really good way to start. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, this is one of my favorites to this day. Um, and uh, yeah, it's amazing oh, yeah. to see how, how the wood really changes and, and make, creates yeah, more color. complex flavors yeah. and, and colors and, and aromas as well. I'm trying to figure out what I'm tasting in the back there. If you, the longer I leave it in my mouth, the more I get kind of like a, a bit of a spiciness. Maybe it's the, the wood oak coming through or... Yeah, so you get a lot of, like you said, perfect. You get a lot of vanilla, a lot of the oak itself, uh, but the vanilla is also coming from, from the oak, from yep. that interaction. Uh, some people also get a hint of uh, chocolate sometimes. Uh, so yeah, it's a very nice, rounded, complex rum. When you say chocolate, see, now I can taste it. I, I convinced you. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. So the next product in the lineup is uh, something that's very unique. Um, really, really like this product. Um, obviously, being in Cambodia, we wanted to really reflect that in, in the products. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, from our point of view, there's really not any other flavor that represents Cambodia as much as Kampot pepper. Very, very famous, very, very famous. Um, so this is technically a spice rum, but only one spice, only the pepper. And this. Right, right. right. Um, we'll, we'll test it in a second, but you're gonna, I mean, there's no doubt that there's pepper in there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, in, in this case, the color is actually coming from the pepper itself. So this is not a, a aged in the barrels. Oh, okay. Uh, it contains some of the gold rum, but it's the, the color is naturally from the red pepper. Right, that we right. Use. Okay. Um, when we were trying to create this product, we didn't want to, you know, most infusions have kind of like hints of the flavor. This is really going to be kind of a kick in the face of the pepper. Right? Okay. So you're going to get the <laughs> alcohol, the spice, the sweetness. Yeah, yeah but the, the pepper, pepper as well. Flavor, right? So, yeah, hope okay, you like it. Okay, absolutely. Cheers. Cheers again. Oh, already I can smell the pepper there. Yeah.
Yep, that's pepper. Yeah. Wow. But so, that is incredible though, isn't it? The rum with the, with the pepper is amazing. Yeah, it's a great combination. Wow. It's very unique. Um, it also makes amazing cocktails. It's a little bit harder. I can imagine, but get it right. I can, ima it, but but it, it right. I can imagine that you can do some wondrous things with yeah. this. Absolutely, absolutely. That is very unique. That is absolutely very unique. If you get the chance, guys, definitely one of the ones to try for sure. For sure. I don't think I've tried something quite like that before. Especially as you mentioned, Cambodia is so famous for their Kampot pepper. To incorporate it into your journey in Samai, I think is very, very amazing. And you've come up with an incredible product too. It took us a while. That, that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. how, how many years do you think came into? Probably about a year until we had the first recipe and then we've been improving. Oh wow, that. just a year on the recipe. Um, just because uh, you know, we, we actually use the pepper itself in three different ways to extract different parts of the flavor and then blend them back together, right? So it's a pretty complicated. It sounds like it's process. complicated. I think we've only just scratched the surface of it when we're in the distillation yeah. process about how that's made. So maybe we've got to come back and learn that sure, a bit sure. more, but sure. that is incredible, incredible. Okay, so cool. tell us about the last one. We've got one more here. It's a lot darker than the others. Yep. So this is our PX rum liqueur, okay? This was actually meant to be a very, very limited edition that we launched many years ago, but due to constant demand, we, we brought it back. So it's a good thing, right. we love the product for sure. So again, this is technically a, a rum liqueur. Uh, the reason for that is that it's actually a blend of our rum, our gold rum with a sherry wine from Spain, okay. right? Okay. So that's blended in different ways and then aged back in the barrels uh, for a few more months to round it up, right? Um, so, you want to try it, um, you're definitely going to get a lot more of the sweetness from the sherry, but you're going to, the, the rum still kind of comes out and you, you still get those flavors. Just to our viewers, um, the, sh the sherry is a cup of wine, correct? Yeah, sherry is a, is a type of wine, it's like a sweet, sweet wine from, sweet wine. from Spain. Okay, yeah. okay, amazing, okay. Well, here we go. Oh, silky smooth. Yeah. I do get that that sort of wine sherry taste, but it's not overpowering. Yeah. You get it a bit on the nose, but then the rum really does come through. It kind of hits you in the back. Yeah, it's really nice. Just drink it like this. Oh, something like an old fashioned or a Manhattan, yeah. like a really, really old classic cocktail, or just on the rocks. Yeah. But even, I mean, all these rums just by themselves are being phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, so this one, we're, as I said, we brought it back. Uh, we are going to continue this limited amounts, but it's going to be an ongoing product. So it's part of our ongoing portfolio, right? Amazing. Now. I can see why it's so popular. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Well. All right. Well, should we move on to the final stage of the tour? We'll go to the, we'll go to the retail shop and uh, we'll ask you a few questions, I think. Sounds good. All right. So here we are guys in the final stage of our distillery tour with Daniel in the final shop. Thank you so much for having us. This has absolutely been an incredible journey. Amazing to hear about you and Samai. Uh, we just got a few, few questions uh, from the viewers that have been asked along the way. Um, so what is the meaning behind Samai, the actual name? Sure, it's a great question actually. So obviously being a Cambodian product and, and seeing the potential of Cambodia and the new generation, we really wanted to bring this out in our branding, right? Amazing, and amazing. Yeah. That's actually what the name Samai means. It's like a new era, a new generation. Yeah, I really feel like on this on this tour, we've seen a big connection between Khmer culture, Cambodia as a whole, with you guys and your product, which is really, really cool to see. It's really, really come to life here. Uh, I learned so many things on the way that I didn't about you guys, and I'm really, really, really impressed. Um, other things about, what do you think about the future of Samai? I mean, are you guys expanding, are you going overseas, are you taking the products anywhere else, or is it just in Cambodia right now? Yeah, definitely. No? So we, we've been, well, obviously selling in Cambodia for the last six years, but uh, we've also been exporting to Singapore, France, and more recently Spain. And we might be announcing one or two more markets in the coming months. So really the focus is to really expand operations. It's been a big success, a great adventure. And uh, we're very lucky to say that, yeah, there's demand for Samai in kind of countries all over the world. Uh, so that's the plan, expand great, our production, great run. Great expand run. sales. Yeah. Thank you again so much. If, if guys, you really love what you want to see when I do the distillery tour, uh, they're still doing the available tours. Uh, they do a Thursday event where you come in and you can drink at their bar. And then if you're lucky enough to have Daniel here, he'll be able to give you some key points. Um, come to the retail shop if you'd like to buy some of their product and also, of course, it's liquor as well. 
Daniel, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it.